Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For this week's episode of Throwback Thursday, we're checking out the AMD Radeon R9 280X, which means we're also checking out the Radeon HD 7970GHz edition, which is a factory overclocked 7970. And for those of you unaware, all three models are based on the same GPU, codenamed Tahiti XT. This means they pack 2048 cores, 128 texture mapping units, and 32 render output units. They all feature the same GDDR5 memory interface using a 384-bit wide memory bus. The only real changes have been made to the core and memory clock speeds. The 7970GHz edition and the R9-280X are very similar in terms of clock speeds, and they're basically factory overclocked versions of the original 7970 released in early 2012. In order to better compete with the GeForce GTX 680 and take back the performance crown, AMD decided to overclock the 7970 by almost 15% to create the 7970GHz edition. For their efforts, they charged an additional $50 US. Anyway, 18 months later, with nothing new to push out, the 7970GHz edition was rebranded as the R9-280X. The MSRP was dropped from $500 US down to $300 US. So even though we were getting the same performance and basically the same graphics card, it was at least a fair bit cheaper. Shortly after the release of the 280X, the Radeon 200 series was completed with some GCN second generation parts which included the R9 290, 290X and 295X2. We also got the Radeon R9 285 which was based on the third generation GCN architecture, but that model was probably a bit of a flop, or at least it was in my opinion anyway. Despite being a rebranded graphics card, the 280X was actually a pretty hot item at the new MSRP and sold quite well. Today, they can often be selling for between $120 and $190 US on the second-hand market. So, given today's horrible market conditions, that places it alongside the GTX 1050 and RX 560. So, for those seeking maximum bang for their buck, which option provides the best results? Well, we're about to find out. Representing the old vintage GPU is the Sapphire Vapor X R9 280X 3G model. All testing has been conducted on our Corsair GPU test rig, which comprises of a Core i7-8700K, clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of Vengeance DDR4 3200 memory. The Radeon R9 280X gets off to a flying start in our Battlefield 1 test, and it's the first older card we've revisited this year capable of averaging more than 60 FPS in this title at 1080p using the ultra quality settings. As a result, it was 13% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti and 24% faster than the GTX 680, which also means the 7970GHz edition would be at least 20% faster in this title. Moving on to Dawn of War 3, and here we see the R9 280 continuing to tear the competition apart with an average of 79 FPS. This meant it was 16% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti and 18% faster than the HD 7950 and GTX 680. I should also note that the 1% low result of 59 FPS was greater than the average result for the RX 560 and GTX 1050. The R9-280X also does well in Dirt 4, and here it managed to edge out the GTX 680 by a 7% margin. Testing was conducted using the medium quality settings, so it's fair to say you could crank up the visuals with the 280X. Next up we have For Honor, and for the first time so far we see the GTX 680 beating the R9-280X, though only by a mere 4% margin. Overall performance was good, and you could probably get away with higher quality settings and still see an average of over 60 FPS. Moving on to Ghost Recon Wildlands, and here the R9-280X matched the GTX 680 and GTX 1050, while it was 10% slower than the GTX 1050 Ti. So a reasonable result in this title, though we are only using the low quality preset, and optimizations aren't particularly great for this one. Then the R9-280X runs away with it in Mass Effect Andromeda, hitting 81 FPS on average, making it 14% faster than the GTX 680. It also edged out the GTX 1050 Ti and crushed the GTX 1050. Then in Prey, the 280X beats the GTX 1050 Ti while it was comfortably ahead of the GTX 680, though with both pushing over 60 FPS at all times, you'd probably struggle to spot the difference. The GTX 280 also blasted the competition in Resident Evil 7, beating the GTX 1050 Ti by a whopping 20% margin and the GTX 680 by 23%, so a clear victory for AMD's rebadged HD 7970. Here we can see that on average, across the eight games tested, the R9-280X was 10% faster than GTX 680, though it has to be said, our spread of games is 
somewhat kind to the red team, and no, this wasn't intentional. We recently saw that the HD7950 struggled against the GTX 760 in titles such as Counter-Strike, Dota 2, Fortnite, Overwatch, and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. Had those titles been included, then the 280X and the GTX 680 might have come out of this offering a very similar level of performance. So just keep that in mind. That said, let's move on to see how the R9-280X plays in a few of these titles. First up, I played a few rounds of Rainbow Six Siege and I found on average that the R9-280X was good for over 100 FPS at all times using the medium quality settings at 1080p. In the same sections of the game, the 280X was roughly 30% faster than the GTX 680. Whereas the GTX 680 averaged 108 FPS with dips as low as 88 FPS, the 280 never dropped below 106 FPS, and this allowed for an average of 139 FPS. We saw that previously the R9 280X was over 20% faster than the GTX 680 in Battlefield 1, and this had a big impact on the quality settings that we were able to use. Whereas the GTX 680 was limited to the medium quality settings for playable performance, the R9 280X could handle the ultra quality settings and still push over 50 FPS at all times when gaming at 1080p. So an impressive result here for the old AMD GPU. The R9-280X powered through Battlefront 2 using the high quality settings providing smooth, highly playable performance. Under the same conditions it was 18% faster than the GTX 680 in this title, and overall we saw an average of 69 FPS with a minimum of 59 FPS. Moving on to Fortnite here, we saw an average of 105 FPS with drops down to 69 FPS in our 10 minute test. Although this performance using the medium quality settings at 1080p is only comparable to what we saw with the GTX 760, it's obviously still very playable, and you could certainly afford to turn the quality settings up on Notch or 2. Although not an apples to apples comparison with the GTX 680, in Overwatch we did use the same quality settings and overall performance was almost identical. Using the ultra quality settings, the R9 280X was silky smooth, churning out 87 FPS on average with a minimum of 70 FPS, so overall a great result. Then finally, I gave PUBG a whirl and here I was forced down to the medium quality settings and this was also the case with the GTX 680. In fact, despite playing on a different map, we still saw an average of 66 FPS, the exact same average as the GTX 680. So overall performance should be very similar between the two. In my test with the 280X, I saw a minimum of 52 FPS with an average of 66 FPS. So overall, very playable, but if you want to maintain over 60 FPS at all times, you will have to go down to the low or very low quality settings. Then finally, we have some power consumption figures. The Radeon R9 280X wasn't the most power efficient GPU released in late 2013, and remember it is still based on year and a half old technology. Still, compared to the GTX 580, it was a massive improvement, and given that it beat the GTX 680 in most of our tests included in this video, performance per watt is still very good. Also, you have to keep in mind that we are using an 8700K clocked at 5 gigahertz, and with the R9 280X, this combo consumed less than 300 watts when gaming, so it's not exactly gonna put your power supply to the test. Well, there you have it, 2013's Radeon R9 280X, or 2012's HD 7970, looks to be very capable after all these years. Of course, you'd never normally entertain the idea of spending well over $100 US on one of these graphics cards, but today, if you had a thousand of them and you listed them all for $100 US, they'd probably all sell before week's end. Because of the way the market is right now, you can expect to pay around $170 US, and that's actually the average sale price for 280X on eBay during the March period. At the time of making this video, the RX 560 and GTX 1050 cards are selling for $160 US at best, while the 1050 Ti is fetching at least $220 US. Given that 280X was on average 9% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, and the fact that it costs around 20-25% to 25 less makes it a very viable option. Meanwhile, for around the same money as the vanilla 1050, we saw a 25% improvement in performance. Of course, again, it is worth noting that the much older product, the 280X, does consume considerably more power and therefore will run a bit warmer. But the big aftermarket models that I have on hand from Sapphire and Asus do run reasonably cool and quiet. The big hurdle though for potential buyers is the fact that these are second-hand graphics cards with no chance of being replaced under any kind of warranty should something go wrong.
All that said, I'd put my budget cap for a 280X at $150 US, and there are examples of working cards selling for as little as $130 US, but of course you'd have to be a bit lucky to snag one of those. Anyway, for 1080p gaming, the Radeon R9 280X is still a great option, and you can have a heap of fun with it. And that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the testing we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider checking out our Patreon page. We do a monthly live stream, and we have a Discord chat. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.